Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on this fine and glorious day. Now today I will be focusing on the flowers, so I will be cracking on with the new wildflower bed and I'll also be tidying up the area around the pond as well. So I've just dug that area over but I thought I'd come in for a little bit of a rest and a bit of a sit down and this is the only area in my allotment where I can get any shade. There's absolutely no shade on my plot at all so I have to sit in here with the door shut um, and cool down a bit because it's so hot today. It's going to be hot for the next week. We've got pure sun on the weather forecast um, and it's absolutely boiling. I'm sweating. It's just been such a strange year. I know I went on about it in the last video, but it's just gone from being really hot to really cold to hot to cold. Um, but I think we're having a bit of an Indian summer now, which is always good. I mean, we, we mustn't grumble, but I think it's a little bit too late for some of the plants, like the pumpkins, obviously. Um, but hopefully this bit of sun will give all those second grown season crops, which I put in, like the leeks and the dwarf French beans, it will give them a little bit of a burst that they need. So it's all good. It's all good, <laughs> but um, it's just too hot, it's too hot. So I have dug that wildflower patch over. Now I know that I've gone over that area before in a previous video, but for you, for those of you that haven't seen that video, or if you just want a quick recap, then I will just quickly talk about it, I promise I'll be quick. <laughs> that area there is going to be completely flowers with some vegetables mixed in into the flowers um, but the there's going to be a sort of lawn area in the center um, which is going to have a wildflower seed mix put down there now I picked this up in one of the garden shows that we've done and it's by um, a brand called flower a floral meadow in my garden by Nova Floor and they have loads to choose from but I've chosen an extra short mixture, which is called the Dwarfs, um, because I want where it's going, I want it to be short like a lawn, um, so I can walk on it, but I also want it to look pretty. So um, <clears throat> this is perfect, because there's 26 annual and perennial flowering species there, um, and the average height is about 20 centimetres, <clears throat> which is only about this high, so hopefully it's gonna look really nice. I mean, obviously it will take a year or two to fully settle down to look like it is in the picture <laughs> um, because you have to let it grow, cut it back, uh, let it grow again. Um, but hopefully it will be worth it and I think it will look really nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do, because I've just dug that area over now, is I'm going to level it off, lay the seed mix down and then hopefully leave it. Make sure it's watered because um, you can't let it dry out when you put grass seed down. But it can be sown from September, October and also from March to June, which is really the ideal periods because we get more rain then. <laughs> We're more likely to get more rain then because obviously it will need to, need to be watered if we don't get any rain. So I'm going to put that down and leave it um, and hopefully not walk on it <laughs> until early, in, early next year when it will hopefully be grown. But I also want to focus on putting some more flowers around the border um, because there's still a few gaps there and I haven't really, really planned it out yet. <laughs> I have a few plans and I will go through what flowers I'm hoping to put there in a minute. We'll walk around there. And um, so, yeah, I want to put some more flowers on there, mix some vegetables in, make some wildlife bug hotels. <coughs> Sorry and um, a hedgehog house and I want to put a compost bin there as well so there's still a bit of work to do there but I really want to get this seed mix down so it can start to grow <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to be doing today so I'm just going to go and level that area off and then we shall put the seed mix down so 
so this area is all ready now I weeded it I've dug it over and I sort of leveled it out it's not completely flat um, but it will do for um for what it's intended for so it's all ready to sow the seed but before I sow the seed I'm just going to quickly talk about the flowers which are going to go around the outside um, just very quickly now there are a few already planted here um, there's a few perennials like the verbena there's a verbena there and there's a verbena there because I really really love <laughs> the verbena I don't know if you can tell or not there's also two around the pond as well <laughs> I really like verbena so there's two there um, because what I wanted to do was add some height to around the edge so the verbena grows to about five foot um, and then there was a foxglove here and a hollyhock here oh um, there was also a sunflower there but hopefully next year there'll be more sunflowers because obviously they grow nice and tall um, and there's also a globe artichoke in the back corner there <coughs> which I grew from seed and it's growing really well obviously it won't I won't be able to harvest any till next year um, but that's hopefully going to grow really nice and big and obviously the flowers are beautiful and you can you can eat them as well obviously the artichokes um, I've never tried artichoke but if I don't like it then the flowers are also nice and also the bees like them as well so it's perfect um, and then I was going to have either some sweet peas or some eating peas growing up the archway um, I'm not entirely sure I haven't finalized what else I'm going to be planting around here but there's going to be a few annuals as well like cosmos scabious um, <clears throat> there was also some borage here earlier there's some calendula there was some ranunculus um, what else was there uh, there's zinnias there's um, a chrysanthemum there which didn't flower this year but um it's really really beautiful green flowers um, I bought it at one of the shows we went to um, and I fell in love with it so I had to have it so that's there and um, there's some chamomile growing and there's some fever few uh, there's dahlias um, like I said I haven't really finalized what else I'll be growing here but I have drawn up a sort of plan um, I just really want to jam pack it with flowers around the border just completely jam pack it as much as possible um, but there's also going to be some vegetables in this area there's sweet corn at the moment I don't know if you can see there there's four sweet corns um, they have a, a cob on each one so I'm going to harvest them soon what else is there oh I put some asparagus in that's in here somewhere <laughs> you can just see the label down there um, and then what I'm going to do is my dad's got a spare rhubarb crown so I'm going to put a rhubarb over here there's going to be a compost bin in this area here just a small one one that looks like a beehive because I think that would look really nice um, and then there's going to be a rhubarb down by the compost bin so there's going to be rhubarb asparagus sweet corn and uh, maybe some peas growing up the archway a globe artichoke um, and then just flowers <coughs> just flowers <laughs> uh, because I mean there's loads of bees now there's bees on the verbena they are absolutely loving it and I wanted this area to be for me and for the bees so um so yeah I think it's gonna look quite nice and of course when I put the the seed mix down that will hopefully have some flowers next year so hopefully it's going to look very pretty oh and I also want to put some more lavender in because there's going to be a sort of an entrance here in between this old chimney pot and the um the gypsophila so there's sort of an entrance here so there's going to be an entrance and then it's going to go round here so I want to put maybe two or three lavenders coming into the entrance just to create a nice little lavender hedge a very miniature lavender hedge um <coughs> and that's it so the soil is all ready so the next thing to do is to lay down the wildflower seed mix which I talked about earlier now this actually covers seven meters squared 
um, which is obviously bigger than this space here. So I'm only going to use about half the bag. Now you need to make sure you mix up the seed in the bag. You can use a mixing bowl, but I don't have a mixing bowl up here. <laughs> so I'm just going to give it a really good shake in the bag. Just to shake them all up. So yeah, I'll use about half of this bag in this area. So what I will do is I will use this scaffold board just because I don't want to compact the earth down uh, with my feet. So I will spread the seed over this area. So it's just a matter of getting the handful and scattering it. That's a little bit windy today. But I, I, I don't mind too much if the, if the seeds go into the border. So I will scatter this seed mix down. Um, and then what I will do is I will lightly rake over the surface. And then I will compact the seed down just to make sure that the seed mixture, that the seeds actually make contact with the ground. Um, you can use a lawn roller for that, but obviously I didn't have one of them either. So I will be using the scaffold board. I'm um, just moving it and then compacting the ground down. And then I will give it a good water because you need to water it regularly just until the seeds start to sprout. <coughs> and then that will be done. So I just need to do the area where the board was. There. And then hopefully next year I will have lots of wildflowers and this area will hopefully be full of lovely flowers. Now, the pond area is looking a little bit empty and a little bit dead. <laughs> I hate to say it. Um, what I did this year is I experimented with a few more different plants. I like, for instance, I put a borage in that space there um, and it grew massive and it was really nice, um, but then it died back. Um, so I decided to pull it out because it just looked horrible there. Um, but obviously now I'm left with a big gap and everything just looks a little bit empty <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with what I grew last year which was mainly cosmos uh, scabious zinnias I'm going to keep the calendulas because I always put one here and it always it always flows out into the pond and the frogs absolutely love it they love hiding underneath the calendula and, and, and underneath the water forget-me-not as well there's actually one there there's one there, <laughs> there's one underneath the uh, lily pad and there's one over by the, by the iris as well. So I can count four today, I actually counted ten in one go once. I counted ten little heads all poking out of the water and I was really happy that day. <laughs> I love having the frogs in, I'm so glad I put a pond in. Um, but yeah, the flowers 
just look awful. <laughs> now, there's two perennials, there's uh, two verbenas at the back, they obviously stay, because I love verbena. Uh, there's two roses here, and there's a climbing rose at the back called Penny Rose, uh, Penny Lane, sorry, not Penny Rose, it's a rose called Penny Lane. Um, and then this one is called Katie's Rose. It's only supposed to be 90 centimetres tall. Uh, so what I might do is I might tie it into the shed um, where the climbing rose ties up just because it's in the way a little bit there but there's some buds on there so hopefully I get another another little bloom of roses this year um, the pond in itself I know I know I go on about my pond but I do really love it <laughs> it's just been great for the frogs and I love coming up here and watching them I could actually sit here for hours and just watch the frogs um, but the thing about the pond is that it gets very dirty very quick because ideally you want your pond to be in part shade whereas mine's in full sun because I don't get any shade on my plot it's in full sun which means that the duckweed in there multiplies really quickly um, what I'm hoping is that the grapevine which I planted there last year I'm hoping that that will grow to cover that entire side of the fruit cage um, which will hopefully create a nice bit of shade on the pond in the in the late afternoon evenings obviously that will take four to five years um, to actually fully grow and for me to actually get any grapes from it but um, that's what I'm hoping anyway now the grapevine has grown really quickly I'm really pleased with it what I do need to do is support it though so what I'm going to do is I haven't got them today but I'll do it another day is put some eyelets um, up the fruit cage frame and then run some wire along so I can train the grapevine to cover that side of the fruit cage. Um, so that'll be a job for another day. What I'm going to do today is just clean this area. I'm just going to tidy it up, weed it, deadhead it, get rid of any of the annuals which are dead. I'm just give it a good tidy up, hopefully make it look a bit a bit neater. <laughs> um, uh, yeah that's the job for today. And I think that would be the last job. And then what I'll do next spring is I will sow some seeds at home in the greenhouse. Um, things like the cosmos again and scabious and um, poppies. I was kindly given some Welsh poppy seeds when I visited Wales uh, last time. So they'll be going here as well. They look really nice. A little bit of Wales in my allotment, which will be nice. Um, yeah, I might put some more zinnias here. I might have a good think about what other flowers to put here. I might see what I grew last year. I can't remember what I grew last year. Um, but what ideally what I wanted this area to be is, is to be the wild side. I wanted the new flower patch to be mainly cut flowers. Because um, that's going to be for me and for the bees, whereas I wanted this area to be for the wildlife, so for the bees and the frogs um, and just any wildlife that is welcome in my allotment. <laughs> so, this was going to be the area which I wasn't really going to touch, I wasn't going to cut the flowers, I was just going to leave them. Um, so, I'm going to have a good sit down and a good think about what flowers to put here, but there will definitely be the scabious and the cosmos again because they're just so easy to grow <laughs> and they look nice as well um, and the calendula looks nice too and lots of poppies because I really love poppies but um, for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the pond out of all that duckweed I will scoop it out with my net and put it in the, on the side here so any insects that are caught up can climb back into the pond um, hopefully I do that without scaring the frogs too much oh there's two there now uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully I'll do that uh, without scaring the frogs too much. Um, and what I'm hoping is, is that next year I get some frog spawn. Because if I counted 10 frogs in there, hopefully, hopefully I will get some frog spawn next year. That would be really nice. Really nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to clean the pond out, weed it, take any annual flowers out, deadhead, general tidy up, and hopefully it will look a bit nicer. Um, but it's absolutely baking here. My leg is boiling hot. It's so hot today. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on with that. 
maybe harvest a few things and then head home. I've just finished tidying up around the pond area, it's all looking so much neater. But I thought I would harvest the pumpkins and bolotti beans out because they were ready for harvesting. Um, and here they are! There's three tiny, tiny munchkin pumpkins. Um, and then these bolotti beans. I'm actually quite happy with the amount here because the vines didn't actually grow that big. I thought I wasn't going to get many. I thought I was just going to get like a handful, but there's, there's quite a nice amount there. There could have been more. Obviously last year I filled this truck full with bolotti beans. Um, but seeing as this year hasn't been the best year for growing, I'm quite pleased with them. So they have dried out quite nicely on the vines. But what I'll do is I will take them, the beans out of the pods, lay them on a window so just so they can thoroughly dry out. And then I'll put them in a jar um, and store them, even though we'll probably eat them before next year. We're actually still eating the dried bolotti beans uh, that I harvested last year. <laughs> they are really delicious and you can add them in stews and casseroles and things. They are so delicious. Um, so yeah, I'll be drying them out and putting them with the other ones because they last for about four years once they're dried. Um, and I'll probably just use these munchkin pumpkins as decorations because <laughs> they are a bit too small to eat. <laughs> so uh, they can sit on the fireplace and look very autumnal, which will be nice. Um, but that's it for this video. It was just a, a general tidy up, really. I just wanted to get a few of the jobs like sowing the seed mix done before I went away again. And I'm actually starting to get on top of things now. It's all, it's all starting to look a bit tidier, a little bit neater. There's still a few weeds hanging about, but um, I don't think it will take too long to get on top of them. Um, so that's it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.